In the video game development world, the term engine gets thrown around a lot. Most have the understanding that an engine is somehow related to how a game runs and that games using the same engine have a similar feel or look. In this video, we'll take a quick look at what game engines are and why they matter. If I had to put it into one sentence, I would say a game engine is essentially the program that you use to create your game. The Adobe Illustrator to your picture, the Sony Vegas to your video, or the Microsoft Word to your document. I often like to think of a game's engine as a really advanced custom map editor. If you've ever played a real-time strategy game like Age of Empires or StarCraft, you may have poked around in the map editors at some point. They allow you to use the assets within the game to create your own levels and even make your own triggers, such as sending a unit to this location gives you this amount of resources. Many games have a level editor of some kind, and people with experience in modding might even know about using the tools to actually create your own models and unique graphics, weapons, or sounds into the game. An engine is very similar to this, but several levels deeper. In order to make your vision for a game come to life, you don't have to start from the very ground up. Many aspects of the program that is the game are reusable. The type of complex code that does all the heavy lifting takes a lot of time to create, and it doesn't necessarily need to be specifically engineered to each specific game. Many of the things going on beneath the surface, such as the graphics rendering engine that calculates how to represent things on the screen, the physics engine, which constantly checks to see if you've run into a wall or picked up an item, the scripting engine, which figures out when to send your enemies to your location and what they should do when they get there or other parts that produce sound, artificial intelligence, and animations. The game engine is how everything is done. You, as the game creator, are simply defining what should be done. What am I controlling? What does it look like? What buttons do what? And what amount of damage does this weapon do? What speed is this car am I driving? And where is the finish line? These are the things that you tell the engine, and then it runs the instructions to make those things happen. For example, if you want to make a Star Wars game, you don't need to teach the program how to create a Stormtrooper or a Jedi or any other model, or how to make that Stormtrooper behave. You just need to tell it what a Stormtrooper should look like and what it should do in certain circumstances. Let's look at a game that was made from the Quake 3 engine, Star Wars Jedi Outcast, a personal favorite of mine. The creators of this game, Raven Software, wanted to make a Star Wars game, and the ID Tech 3 engine used by Quake 3 was big at the time. So how did they turn this into this? Well, let's start by considering the visual aspect. Quake 3 had a graphics rendering engine that could do all of the calculations required to render a world and the things in it. But this doesn't look like Star Wars. So they told the engine to make some changes. Instead of rendering this model, they told it to render this one. And then they added some things, took some things out, and changed what was left. And then they told the animation engine that instead of moving like this, the model should now move like this. The sound engine should no longer make these sounds, Excellent. but should instead make these sounds. The scripting engine was told that when a character is hit in the head, it should now take more damage, and it checks to see if that happened by using the physics engine. The scripting engine is also told that certain keys being pressed means different things happen. If the crouch key is pressed while the forward key is held down, the character should do a roll, which it uses the animation and physics engines to do. If the force push key is pressed down, it should push everything in front of you back, and that's where the physics and animation engines come back in. If the enemy is pushed off of a high enough ledge, they will take damage, which is handled by the scripting engine and the physics engine. All of the calculations are done the same way as they are in Quake 3, by the same tools, but they're doing completely different things based on different circumstances. There are many examples of completely unique games being made from the same engine. The Unreal Engine made many classics, including Deus Ex. The engine created for Mario 64 was heavily modified to create Ocarina of Time. Certain engines have different pros and cons, so depending on what type of game you want to make, it's important to figure out which ones excel in which areas. One of my favorite engines, the Source Engines, was pioneered by Half-Life 2, and it was really good at handling realistic physics, cohesive skeletal animations and textures and water effects, 
All of these combine to form a very believable and immersive world. Ah, MIT graduates are few and far between these days. We'll get you out of that hazard suit and back into your lab coat where you belong. The Quake 3 engine was one of the first to be able to render curved three-dimensional objects, something that's much more difficult than it sounds and that we take for granted today. Various iterations of the Cry engine have all excelled at high dynamic range, allowing massive open worlds to be physically and visually presented from wherever you're looking. Game engines with really good value calculating and data storage capabilities are ideal for creating RPGs, and engines that can render a lot of models on the screen at the same time are good for real-time strategy games. Path calculating is also an important part of this game type. Now keep in mind, an engine is not the only thing games can have in common. There are other development tools created on top of this aspect that are sometimes reused by game developers as well. When Valve made Team Fortress 2, Portal, and Left 4 Dead, they not only reused the Source engine from Half-Life 2, but also many of the animations, models, sounds, and scripting algorithms and AI from the game Half-Life 2 as well. When creating Zelda Majora's Mask, Nintendo reused not just the game engine from Ocarina of Time, but also a lot of the same models, enemies, sounds, and items from the game. And this is an example of not only using the same engine, but telling the engine to do some of the same things it was doing before. Oftentimes developers of a different company than those that made the original will do the same thing if it makes sense to. And no, this isn't stealing, they pay a good sum of money for it. Like with many things, it's more complex than can be summarized in a matter of minutes, so if you're interested I encourage you to delve more into this topic, but that's the basic idea summarized. Now I'm going to list some of the other popular game engines and the pros and cons of each. The Unreal Engine has always been good at fast rendering and optimization, making it ideal for action game. It also contains a lot of developer-friendly tools, and has a lot of tools that allow changes to be made to the game after it has been created. The downside is that the Unreal Engine requires a fairly large team of specialized people working together very closely for it to be utilized efficiently. If you have only two or three people working on a game, it's not recommended. Large-scale projects like Mass Effect and Gears of War are some recent examples of games that use this engine. The Frostbite engine is most notable for its ability to render very large maps with destructible terrain and large amounts of players. This has made it ideal for the Battlefield games, Mirror's Edge, and Need for Speed. The Unity engine has the advantage of having very loose and open licensing agreements and being relatively easy to use, even if it's somewhat limited in power. It's a great choice for third-party and independent games like Cuphead. It's worth noting that while most games do use pre-designed engines, some developers do prefer to create everything from the ground up. Blizzard Entertainment is one of the most famous examples here. They have such high quality standards that they create a new engine for each game they make, specifically optimized to do one thing very, very well. StarCraft 1 and 2, World of Warcraft, Heroes of the Storm, and Overwatch all have their own engine tailor-made to the needs of the respective games. This allows Blizzard to have complete control over their games, free of licensing fees or any programming restraints. The only time Blizzard has ever used an out-of-house engine for a game was for the game Hearthstone, which is simple enough that creating a personally optimized engine was unnecessary. One final thing to mention here is that video game engines are not really unique to gaming. They exist under a greater category known as Integrated Development Environments, or IDEs. Now, IDEs are basically game engines for just any type of program. A way to visualize, organize, modify, or debug your code so that looking under the hood of your program doesn't have to look like this. There's an abundance of great information out there which explores the way engines have been adapted, added to, taken from, and reorganized over time to form new ones. A huge number of engines can trace their roots back to the Quake engine. Even the Gold Source engine made for Half-Life, which was considered a pioneering engine at the time, was technically a heavily modified Quake 2 engine, acquired shortly after John Carmack made it open source. So I think I'm going to wrap this video up here, and as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and checking out my other videos is a huge help, and I appreciate the support. I've also reactivated my Patreon account, which as it currently stands is just a tip jar to support me, though I do plan to add perks and other benefits before too long. A link to that can be found in the description. 
Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.